Do you feel comfortable? Uh huh. Okay. There you go. It feels weird. Oof. I'm locked in right now. I'm waiting on somebody to come let me out. Is there something behind me? Uh, is there anything behind me? No, what? My backup sensor is beeping like there is. Is there something on my bumper? Not much is picking up this car. Not much is picking up that car. No, it's beeping like I'm about to run over something. I just pulled up. There ain't no way. Love you. Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. So now that I've got Elizabeth set up and working, she's she is uh, has taken taken a little pressure washing. It ain't a little pressure washing job. It's like 200 foot of fence. There's some friends of hers that she works for occasionally that wanted somebody to pressure wash. She's like, I'll do it. I need Christmas money. That's work. And I'm going on a call for a a beehive and a gambrel style house. That's a barn shaped house for those of you who don't know what a gambrel is. And the uh, property owner wants to keep the bees. So we're gonna set the bees up in their brand new equipment that they ordered off of Amazon. We're going up in the woods in, in Alabama. There's a Dollar General. Aroma fans are gonna be. Looks like the right size too. 64s. I do. Thank I usually you. get your right to the spot. If we have them, <laughs> that's where they'd be. <laughs> yeah, there's that. All right. Just in case. Yeah. Thank you. So here we go. Out in the woods to tackle this job. Get these bees housed up for these people. Turn them into real beekeepers. Down a five mile dirt road with two neighbors, I think, that sit on the whole road. And so nobody's going to be around. So it makes it easy to record. I don't have to worry about a whole lot of extra noise. I don't have to worry about the lawnmowers running and traffic. That makes recording quite a bit easier. found my way back into the tiniest little redneck community you ever seen. There's people living in modified storage sheds. I thought it was a new road, but there's a lot of old established homesteads in here. Not a lot, but what's in here has been here for a long time. So what I'm looking at right here is their bee problem. I'm seeing a lot of bees flying around like they're checking it out, scouting it out. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna find a dead out. These are just robbers. I could be wrong, but there's an awful lot of drift going on right here. There's been a hive here for a good bit of time. Though. There's a lot of propolis up in the gaps, the color. What's your name? Joshua. Joshua. Okay. And uh, evidence of termites. We're gonna pull this board off, see what we see. I don't think we're gonna find a healthy colony there. Some combs in there and bees on it, but heat up. Can't tell at this point if they're robbing it or working it. They've been here for a while. You know how long? I know five, six months for sure. Yeah, they've been a in there longer than that. That's how long I've been here. Oh, okay. How'd you find this place back here? I come to build that the thing over the RV right there. Yeah. I never left. <laughs> I didn't think there was nothing back in here, and the further I drove, the more I'm seeing an old homestead. It's been back here a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is when they uh, homesteaded the property back today. Yeah. This comes from that. There's a whole mound of them on the back of that floor. 
Yeah. Yeah, that stirred them up. Smoker to mess with them things. They a little testy. All right, yeah, y'all might want to get back. Pick a piece off or bite a hunk out of it. Is it thick? Yeah. <laughs> you just chew it till you get all the flavor out of it and then you spit the wax out. Yeah, that's crazy. This is a kind of a uh, defensive colony. Of course it is in the low 70s, overcast day. It's been looking like it's gonna rain. Good amount of bees in here though. It's not a dying colony, it doesn't look like, and they got some reserves for winter. He's putting the equipment together for these to go in. I'm gonna get my rubber bands and set up me a little workstation. We got a lot more bees in here than I thought we were gonna have. Whenever I started seeing all that drifting, I thought we were gonna have a dying colony. And it's looking like looking like we got something to work with. But they're pissy. Fishy son. You're off of school for a while. Yeah, they've had um, see the wax moth, chrysalis. They've had hive in here before for sure. And then this one's been in here since at least last year. I'm not happy about it, I can tell you that much. That's probably 10 stingers right there. Not happy about being messed with on this cool, cloudy day. First comb out, dry and empty. So I'm probably going to frame up most of this is not honey loaded. There's not a lot in here really. You got one, two, three, four, five, probably a small one up in there. And then, you know, these crooked ones. These crooked ones I'm not going to frame up for sure. I might try to frame up some honey if I can get it without it making a mess because that's just going to be attractant for robbers. Don't really want to frame up full combs of honey if you don't have to it's not good for them They're having to fight to keep it in this at the same time trying to rebuild the hive there's just a fairly stable base that's where we're going to set them up for the time being right here on the corner of the house and then later on when they get a cold day they can when they get a cold couple of days they can move them and set them up where they want them first comb out can't really use it it's a, it's got a twist on it you don't want to frame that up it's going it's not going to straighten out it's going to naturally want to twist and they're just going to burr comb it all up cross comb if i've got any straight honeycombs i don't normally frame up honeycombs but if i've got any straight ones that are not running when i'm done with them i'll frame up some honeycombs but definitely i think i got five good brood combs on the bottom maybe two on the top i don't know if there's any brood in them or not but they're they're fairly straight we're moving the bees two feet approximately from their current location. Look at that. Look at that honeycomb. That's a new one? Yeah. 
the whiter the comb, the newer the, the newer it is. The newer the wax. Drop that one. And then slats are going to take place with that honeycomb? Uh, well, they'll build comb on them. You got a freezer or refrigerator you can put this in? Yes, sir. We got a deep freeze. And that's how you would store it? Uh, you don't have to, but right now, it'll kill anything on it and help dry it down a little bit, keep the bees off of it. So you, you could probably take them two right there and go ahead and put them up so the bees don't get all over it. That's a lot of bees. Yes, sir, it is a lot of bees. So right now I'm checking this, checking this old brood comb, looking for any actual brood to see if we have a queen in here and, and uh, queen searching at the same time. Uncapped, a little pollen mix, a little bee bread in there. Makes me think there should be some brood in here somewhere in the hive. Maybe not on this piece of comb, but somewhere in the hive. Give y'all a good, good shot so you can check it out for yourself. See if I'm overlooking anything. I'm not seeing any brood yet. So I'm just eyeballing where I'm gonna cut. I'm framing this. The frame's upside down right now. So I'll set this in here where the um, cells are in the correct orientation when I flip this frame over. And I'm trying not to knock bees off of it. It's tough to do. And you gotta try not to pop them and, and don't let them get stuck under the rubber band because they will. Get another frame prepared. You can do all your frames ahead of time or you can do them one at a time. I usually do them one at a time because I don't ever know how many I'm going to need. These are brand new, just assembled. They came, came unassembled. He had to assemble them. Sometimes they'll fly on you. It's not very often, but sometimes they will fly on you. Yeah, I got one in my hat and one in my shirt. <laughs> Capped honey on one side, a little bit of capped on the other side, pretty heavy piece of cone. The bottom of it's fairly fragile. I think I might go ahead and try to frame this one up. So you're always taking a chance framing, well you're taking a chance framing any comb up when you do a cut out, but uh, especially honeycomb and especially in a dearth, and we're in a dearth right now, so I don't want to give them too much that they can't manage and give other hives opportunity to come in and rob them. So that's why we're only we're only gonna give them one comb and they can feed them as needed. We don't want to put any more in there that, that they have to manage that they don't really have any use for at the moment. So and you can see this one's a little bit twisted, a little bit curved. And you can straighten these to some degree, but it elongates cells and it rips it and stuff, and they'll try to put it back like it's supposed to be. They can't always, but they could turn those into drone cells or something maybe, but you know, if you have to use it, that's all you got. You can kind of straighten it out like that, as long as it's not twisted too bad. Okay. Smaller cells are the females, or the worker bees, which is what's in the air right here. Yeah. There's not any males in here right now. That just, that's the only part you pulled open so far? That's the whole, the whole hive was right here. Oh, okay, it wasn't on that underneath the other part? No, it had come down. To, it had come down to here before, mm -hmm. but it had died out, and wax moths ate it. And this is another hive that's been here since last year. Okay, yeah, because there used to be an old one. Yeah. And then that one. Uh, yeah, the old one was a little, about twice as big. This is. <laughs> it's, it's deep, but this is all wax moth feces from them eating that hive out. So it's deep in this wall. That explains all those moths that were in that house that died. So this is all the wax moth feces. And ooh, I thought that was a board. It's just more insulation and stuff. What is it? It's like little black dots that were inside the honey. 
Oh, oh yeah, it's bee parts. Go ahead and eat it. Oh. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's it's safe. It's clean. Yeah, we got a lot of bees in here. We got to run them to this box. It's in this bucket here. All right, battery died. I don't know what y'all missed, but there's where we're at. That piece of comb fell. Got the corner comb up in there and bees just all over the place. Right now, I'm just kind of queen searching. I hadn't seen any brood at all. Doesn't mean there's not a queen in here. We are going into winter. We're in mid-November. It's possible that they just quit laying. It's also possible that they're queenless. Uh, right now, we're fingers crossed we're looking for a queen, hoping to find one. And this next next big piece of comb is going in a frame. Now this fell down in here, had a soft landing and landed upright like, like in the position you saw it. So I don't think it crushed anybody. If it was a queen on it, she certainly would have survived that. But this piece of comb has some nectar in it. It's got so many bees on it, I can't really see what else is on it because this is where they've really been clustering is in this corner where it fell from. So if there's any chance of brood, it's in my hand because I've cut out everything else except for that corner piece, which is not normally the piece you're going to find brood in when they're down to nothing like this. They're not acting queenless. Oh yeah, good looking suit. <laughs> it was canvas too, so. Okay. Oh, right. How much was that? <laughs> One twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now we're still on the queen search. Okay. And since you've got gloves on, mm -hmm. and you're fully suited up. Yeah. Here's what I want you to do. All right. <laughs> here's what I want you to do. You feel comfortable? Uh huh. Okay. We'll just slowly, slowly. Reach up in here and work your hand up behind these bees. Okay. Wiggle your fingers if you need to, so you don't so you don't crush them. You know, the, the goal is don't crush any bees. Okay. Get you a nice little handful and dump them over in the box. Okay. Now that corner piece is comb, so go up to go up this uh, right here. here. Just yep. scoop them up or behind. Yeah, you can get you one finger outside that black uh, tar paper and one finger inside of it, okay. and just go up like that. Just whatever you get. Now your gloves are probably kind of slick, so they might not cling to them very well. You may have to palm up. There you oh, go. It feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't go well. No, that went fine. That was your first shot. Let me get the smoke right away so it doesn't choke you. No, that was good. <laughs> Just, it, it was a weird sensation. Oh, I know. There you go. You put your other hand up there to hold them if you need to. You can get close. You're suited up. Now, hold your hand there and look for a queen. Okay. No queen, go ahead and dump them. Just shake your hand off in there. So they're good. They're naturally gonna wanna go back to this wall because that's where they know home to be. Yeah. But the more of this comb we remove and the more they realize that home's not there anymore, the easier to get be to get them to the box they're not they're not going to want to go to the box easily anyway but that's what we're working on so right. scoop up more yeah however, however many times you want to do Those gloves are so big on you, they don't look like they've got fingers in them. <laughs> Ooh, that was cool. There you go. No queen. Yep, no queen. I mean, I've only watched them too. I know that they, uh, they all face her, right? Oh, uh, not always. Not always. Oh, okay. In a situation like this, they're not going to be surrounding her unless she's off by herself. She'll be climbing all underneath of them. So as we scoop them out, we're looking for, for her to show up. Yep. 
night. Um, you don't really have to be too concerned except for, look at me. Mm -hmm. Your nose is touching your veil. When I you know, look that's up. why I keep trying to do so, that. Okay. If you, if you need to, you can put a ball cap on. Uh -huh. If you wear a ball cap, the bill of the ball cap usually will hold it off your face. Okay. But okay. normally, you're not going to be doing it like this. Normally, you're going to be looking down. Uh -huh. You're going to be looking over a hive. Right. And so you're not going to be looking up in a wall like this. So you don't, you probably don't have anything to worry about okay. as far as that's concerned. Okay. But if yeah, you... It looks like there's a little thingy in here. I guess I should have attached to something. Like a <laughs> I thingy. see that. That's probably to hold the thing shut or something. Yeah. This is what would have been honeycomb. You said how thick it is, how deep it is. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put that on the outside of their of their cluster of their combs. Okay. Because honey's usually gonna go on the outside. The center is mostly gonna be brood combs and then honeycombs towards the outside. And I'm kind of strategically placing them how they might have been in a hive. And the bees will eventually attach these to the frames and chew the rubber bands out. Mm -hmm. And over time, as they work out of these combs, you'll want to rotate these combs out and put good foundations in because they'll tie all this stuff together and you'll end up having to run a knife between them to uh, take them. Yeah, I <laughs> know. So this is what we're kind of, this is what we're gonna do for the time being. We're gonna dump them and let them settle, dump them and let them settle, and I'm fixing to take that last comb out of there. They're still gonna be attracted to this wall. All this propolis and all this. Well, it's you can't really scrape all that out. All this that's in the gaps and everything, all this dark this wood is dark because it's got propolis and everything in the grain. You see between the gap, it looks like caulk. Yeah. That's all propolis and that's gonna, that's gonna have bees scouting this house from now on. So you, when y'all put this together, you're gonna have to make sure everything's sealed up real good. I was amazed at how many old homestead looking things are back in here. I thought it was a brand new road Get back in here and there's stuff been, been in here for. Oh, yeah, my family's been here for 100 years. I, I might have just seen the queen. I wasn't paying a good attention and I <laughs> might have just seen her run in the box. In the box? Yeah. I wasn't sure I was in the right spot. I stopped coming in right where it turns to dirt. And some lady in a little Pontiac stopped in front of me, kind of pulled off the side of the road, so I thought maybe it was you. And so I pulled up, rolled the window down, and she said, I'm sorry, I took a wrong turn. <laughs> I was like, it's okay, I'm lost too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he turned his back, jumped back in there. This is one of the hard parts of a Novak removal when you're trying to relocate them on the same property. They want to go back. So we've got a good amount of them in the hive. There really is a bunch of bees in there. I moved some frames out of the way and looked. We've got a ton of bees in the hive, but we also got a ton of them trying to get back up in this wall. So I'm just making this wall inhospitable with the smoker. I think I might have some B-Quick in the truck, but I don't know. And if I 
if they don't cooperate in the next few minutes we're going to post some be quick up in that wall just to help run them out small high beetle yeah yeah, yeah small high beetles you want to kill them when you see them so we got a little bit of fighting going on a little bit of robbing down here with it or had a piece of comb laying there's some fighting going on down here so what that is is there's another colony in the area that has found us figured out there's opportunity here and they're trying to take advantage So now we've run them all out of the wall again. If these ones in there in the area would go in the box, we'll be good. So we're going to back up and let them have this box for a few minutes. Yeah. See what happens. Mm. Got any stingers yet? Mm -mm. No. So here's what we want to see. We're down to running them in the box. All these on this landing board are fanning nasing off. And that's a pheromone telling the rest of them where home went. So now all I gotta do is let them find it. I sprayed some Be Quick up in the top there because they were trying to go up. Got a bunch of comb here that's gonna go in a melter for some skin products, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, healing fats. Now we're way out in the woods, y'all. Normally bees would fan nasing off. These are probably fanning red necking off. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Oh, is it country? They're Our funny. Fan of some country come hither. All right, y'all. It looks like we've won the battle. Here comes the hunting club coming out. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and stuff this wall so they don't have an opportunity to go back in here. Well, that went a lot faster than I expected. I was surprised. Tucked up in here in these woods is a about a hundred year old homestead. This family's been in this property for a hundred years moved in from Greece There's not a lot of people living back in here but it's all family or really cr close friends well if you live back in here you don't go to town much you don't go to town unless you really need something this road uh, turn a hundred thousand mile vehicle into 250 real quick Because of how bumpy or how dirt, rusty or? Because of how rough it is. Wow. 10, 10 to 15 miles an hour, depending on what part of it. Yeah. My truck already needs shocks, and I can. <laughs> now I got an excuse to put them on because I'm beating the rest of them out. Yeah. How are you doing? Uh, I'm fine. I'm fixing to start putting up because um, it's starting to get dark. Um, I haven't made a whole heck of a lot of progress. Did you figure out a system? I, I did, but I just don't think, still don't think it's the best one. I'm not sure how much more is here, and I'll let you know where I'm getting away and see where you are. Well, yep. I may be a little. Be a little longer than I thought. Did you just realize you forgot something? No, I just got out to the gate. The gate's locked. I gotta find somebody to come unlock it. Oh, great. So they locked it in. Yep. And they gotta come down that road at 10 miles an hour. Yeah, uh, from the sounds of their vehicle, they drive a lot faster than that on it. Huh. Okay. All right, I love you. I love you. Well, that went a lot smoother than I thought it was going to. A lot quicker than I thought it was going to. 
I did have to resort to the chemicals to run bees in the box. I used some swarm rustler on the box as a lure and then be quick on the wall as a as a deterrent and then once i got enough bees off the wall i went ahead and stuffed that wall with insulation just to keep them from going back because they they went back like four times i'd run them out with a the smoker they'd all be kind of settling on the box fanning on the box and then before you know it there's three thousand bees hanging back up in the wall i had to smoke them out again did that several times and then started using be quick to run them run them out for sure and then um, hey, far along, are you? I'm done. Okay. I'm locked in. Back. I'm locked in right now. I'm waiting on somebody to come let me out. There's a about a five mile dirt road, and there's a gate at the beginning of it. Everybody lives in here. He's got a key to it, but nobody lives close to the gate, so I got to wait for somebody to come 15 miles an hour down a five mile dirt road. To <laughs> <laughs> to let me out because everybody lives way at the end of it. So they, they, is a, you got a remote or is it? No, no, it's a, a no, it's a key padlock. It, the, the property, the property runs through 90,000 acres, or the road does, runs through 90,000 acres of uh, some private land and some, uh, I, I, a lot of it's hunting leases, but I don't know who. I'm sure it's private land, but it's leased out. Yeah. Some of it's probably warehouse, or judging by the trees and stuff. Yeah. Here comes my, here comes my key. <laughs> Thank you. See ya. Recording these videos, for me, I gotta be in the right mindset to do it because I'm pretty, well, there's people back there and my backup camera's not beeping. <laughs> Maybe it finally went out. Uh, I'm pretty task oriented. When I get on something, I'm on it. That's why people are like, I can't believe you stayed there the whole time getting stung. Look, when I'm on a job, that's that's my focus. We gotta get this job done. I don't care if it takes till two o'clock in the morning. I ain't going nowhere till this job's done. And it's, it's pretty uh, rare for me to leave a job without it being completely done. Done it a couple of times this year just cause me and Peter getting older and slower. <laughs> We've just had to. But when you focus on video and you don't really want to be working, focus on working, you don't really want to be fooling with the camera. The video gets in the way of the work. Caught behind the Venetian blinds, how to reach for the city lines. This ain't where I belong. So long, farewell, bye-bye Let's 
Instead of toast full of lost old eyes 